Hey there, uh, this is Gary. I wanted to give, I wanted to show you a little bit of Runebound playing the Cult of the Rune Adventure, and I'm playing it solo. I'm using Skeletor's solo rules. I've probably gone. I, I bet you I've played at least a dozen rounds, probably closer to 15 rounds. And uh, so let me kind of show you where I am, give you a little bit of idea about how these two are. are uh, getting together and I can show you a couple of rounds of play here and how it works. So this is the character I have. I, I have a uh, red scorpion. Hey, focus here. I have red scorpion, which I chose because, of course, she had the plus fours. I, my, my thinking was I want to be able to do uh, lots of different kinds of damage since I'm only playing with one character. Uh, you can see I've leveled up a couple of times. I got a couple of uh, stamina <clears throat> tokens taken one damage <coughs> and uh, this is this is a tough adventure because there are many ways to, to lose especially combined with the solo uh, one thing is is that um, let me show you a little bit about the solo play uh, this is at the end of, of my part of the round at the end of my turn uh, I've chosen a, a difficulty you can see I've chosen 18 I could have been 20. Uh, but I've chosen a threat difficulty of 18, since this is my first time. And um, what I do is I roll uh, these uh, two uh, D10s. And if I get 18 or higher, that's a success, and I increase the threat level. If the threat level gets to 10, I lose. Um, the If it's below 18, then what happens is I'm tracking this with uh, this die. I... I these are supposed to be the doom tokens I'm supposed to be using, but I'm just using the die and make it a little bit easier uh, and track those so that when I roll, I can add those two together. I'll show you in a second how this works. Uh, you can see too, I've I've got some nice items. I went for uh, some damage. Uh, this uh, mace was to give me it was the first thing I got to give me extra damage. I got the armor to absorb some damage, and I got this nice uh, staff for for before combat to be able to do a magic attack. Unfortunately, I haven't leveled up in magic, which I need to do, it, which is kind of an interesting uh, part of it, right? Is is that deciding, do I increase my health to be able to survive longer, or do I try to increase my attacks? And I went for increasing my attacks uh, because I feel like I've got to be very aggressive with this game, not only because of the threat levels, but there's another aspect of this, which is when you see the board here, right, on, and with this particular adventure, is is that uh, this is the uh, cult, right? And I move the cult around, and when the cult lands on or gets adjacent to uh, one of these encounters, it flips it over, and you see the number. And that's the only way that I can have an encounter is that is to go and land on one of those encounters where it's been turned over by the cult. The idea is I'm fighting cultists now. I'm not having the regular adventures. So what, what do you do with the regular encounters? Well, the regular encounters are a way that I can, if I land on it, like this one hasn't been turned over, if I landed on that, then I'd be able to move the cult token. Uh, with, since it's yellow, I'd be able to give it two uh, movement dice and, and move it. So I can, landing on the, uh, the, the, the regular encounter tokens allows me to additional manipulation. So I want to do that. And I'll draw a card. If it's an encounter card, then I'll be able to move it. If it's an event card, then, then other stuff happens, which actually hasn't happened yet. Uh, the downside is is that if I get 18 of these regular cards, if I, if I go to 18 of these, I lose the game. So I can only manipulate it so much, uh, but being that he moves, the cult moves three times, uses three dice in the solo, version of the game that makes it a little bit easier. So uh, it's uh, now my turn. Um, since I have the two stamina, I only get to roll three die. Dice. Oh. And what do I get? I got three of a kind. And so uh, it's uh, plains, hills, and no forest, uh, which is really what I want because I want to get to that green uh, right there. So, 
got a tough call. What do I try to do? I want to try to have these encounters. So, and I don't have any rivers. Dead gun it. All right, so let me go ahead and I will just move one time. Now I've landed on a yellow. I'll show you how this works. So now I flip this one, and it's an encounter. Yay! So now I put that in the special discard pile for that. Now I get to give, because it's yellow, two die, two dice to the cult, which they're in an inter interesting position here. And they get ah, exactly what he needed, a mountain and a river and a road. And the reason I said that is because he's stuck. He can't turn north very easily, so he has to roll either hills or mountains because it's, it's only the, he can only move in the direction with the red, or as you can see, the barely the yellow there, at kind of what looks like 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock. So unless he gets one of those terrain types, the hills or the mountains, he can't move. Well, he got mountains, so the cult is going to turn into the mountains. Because it's adjacent now to these two, it's going to flip them. All right. Now he still has one other. He did that. Um, he did the mountain already, but that leaves him with the river and the road, and neither of those he can use, so he just stays there. Now that was a result of my landing on that encounter, which was kind of nice. It produced a couple more cultists for me, and that's what I'm trying to do, is I'm trying to expose the cultists. So now it's the cult's turn. So now I, I roll three of the dice, because that's the solo rule. And... So this is, uh, these are the results that I got. So now I would move the cult, uh, move them on the board, and uh, they get their turn, and we repeat that. So uh, that's, how it's <clears throat> that's how it's been going. Uh, I'm, I'm really liking the combination of these. It's, uh, this is not an easy adventure. I think as I said earlier, it's not an easy adventure. It, um, and the solo rules add another layer of difficulty <coughs> uh, that... Uh, it really kind of fits, you know, that, that idea that there's a, a threat that's going on. It doesn't fit in quite, you know, uh, with the storyline, but it, it fits with the feel of the game. There, there's a, a threat uh, a, a, across the land, and so I'm trying to deal with that. And uh, uh, I, I like the way that it's forcing me to be aggressive, too. I can't be conservative and try to build up. I'm having to attack things even when I'm pretty wounded, when I'm over half health. Uh, I stay with fights uh, pretty long because I feel like I can't just disengage and take more time and go back to the town and heal and then try to re-engage the combat. I feel like I, once, I, once I land on an encounter, I take it and I fight it to the end. If I lose, I lose. So it, 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 um, I, I like the feel of it uh, very, very much.